Hey everyone, Selena for Who is Jesus Today? And I just, uh, here is the beginning of the week, right? And I just wanted to kind of maybe um, recap a little bit on a video that I put up about why I stand for Israel and others. <laughs> and I kind of went down a list of different uh, categories or, or populations of people that I stand with. I also probably have come across by now to those who are subscribers and maybe that's why you may have a, a subscribed or um, those who like to view and you just pass through and you are viewers and uh, that means a lot to me too and there are those that uh, maybe say spy out your channel and see if they can get some of the nuggets to do what they want to do next you cannot stop that um, I always I'm like this I think that you know when you make yourself a public um, you are just that you cannot stop a people from making assumptions from even wanting to borrow or say even outright rob <laughs> some of your ideas or statements uh, I don't think there I don't think there really should be much attention about innovation in of itself when if we are proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ um, because the gospel is inclusive right God's love is inclusive and so um, if you or I can say something that would inspire us someone else or those who uh, themselves are presenters uh, there are some wonderful things I've heard throughout my life from of former pastors and different types of leaders and it has impacted me to the point that I also like to be able to say that but to say it in perhaps a different way so knowledge should be shared and it should be exchanged and um, right because let's be really honest no one is all knowing and we are not just an isolated learner we are we are all observers and who do we observe of course we observe one another but it depends too on how people are observing and perceiving has to do with the intentions of their own hearts and that's true for all of us um, however we feel towards an individual um, towards what they are doing their agenda or even populations we're going to already uh, pretty much project what we even want to be true about them whether it's really proven or not um, we uh, if, if, if you say you are a person who is of diversity nowadays that can be taken all out of context and for me uh, personally I also am careful when I hear words like equity equality diversity because I have seen how they have been exploited in the wrong way we all deserve equality but then it has it has gone and, and I will go over that slightly because I have worked in education and I and I remember when these words were really high a uh, profile words and they sound right equity right 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 across the board equality which is never fully um, accomplished at all uh, uh, by the way from my observation observations a lot but always is more talk than walk and then when you hear words like diversity these buzzwords what have they come to mean and then once these words begin to attach now to certain churches and Christians what do they really mean by that well for a lot of us we meant what what was supposed to be meant 
based on the Word of God. We, as those who are Christians, fill the Holy Spirit, we want to, we, we want to be in line with the uh, context of biblical scripture. Those words like diversity, it never meant to us in the beginning or to begin with what it was made out to be. Okay? And so when I speak, when I think about diversity, I, 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 I'm thinking about, in its most simplest terms, different types of languages and people and food and cultures, different regions, different colors, and that's pretty much what it is, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not, I, I, I don't want any of us to be just really programmed robots. <laughs> you know, we have our own different feelings and opinions. And for some people that will align with uh, the will of God and for some it will not. But I want to clarify some things because I can see how something can be said and it can be projected to be something that it's not so when I say I stand first I stand for God and his word and when I speak of diversity I'm speaking of a very diverse text biblical text the diversity of God's word is that God has something to say to everyone all kinds of people no matter what place they are in, what condition they are in, wherever they are in the world, whatever is their background, there was there were different diverse types of people and populations that God was dealing with in his word. But as we know, the redemption a story of salvation God has brought about through the Jews. And but the Jews also represent diverse populations and kingdoms across the earth and different uh, tribes of people so it, it's 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 always has been really say fluid God created a fluid creation so when I say I stand with something what maybe you say well what does she not stand with or what does she not stand for I don't stand for sin and rebellion I don't stand for it in me. I don't understand. I don't stand for it in others. Right. The soul that sinneth shall die. The wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Right. Uh, I believe hell is a real place. In fact, there's a video out there, and I know I, I I'm not going to claim on this channel how legit it is, but. Um, <laughs> Uh, there's a video out there, I don't know, you know, hell somewhere up there near Siberia, but I'm telling you, they found a pit, a bombless pit, and they discovered accidentally, and they could hear people yelling and screaming and tormented. I listened to the cries of tormented people in that video. They were not dead, they were very much alive. It got to me. The Bible convinced me enough about hell's existence. But I tell you, listening to that, those sounds of agony brought it to life. It just brought it, it just brought it to my ears, I feel. And so, um, that's not a place that I've signed up to go. And I don't encourage, I discourage anyone to sign up and go there. So that's why we need salvation in Jesus. That the wages of sin is death, but the, but there is the gift of eternal life in Christ, um, and so I take that very seriously. But I also I take very seriously how um, we as people have more exclusions than God actually has regarding people a lot, and even their struggles and their issues because you see sin is sin and for the self-righteous mindset it always likes to make distinctions on what's 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 more of the worse sin or who's more depraved or who's worse you see 
Jesus, he levels it out because if you hate, then you're like a murderer. Although you've never physically took anybody out of the world yet, but you hated them. Uh, if you lust, you're in the category of one committing adultery. No one may even see or know. No one knows. Not even your wife knows, your husband, but uh, you and God knows. Or that person, or, or maybe not. So what's really secret, it still comes out and manifests, right? So someone can hide behind that and they can point the finger at someone who is now this mega pastor has been exposed for his adultery and, and yeah, and that's not good. That's something that should make us sad. But maybe the, maybe the guy <laughs> uh, there in his house, he goes to work every day and passes by this particular uh, a woman who's out there with her a garden and he's lusting after her secretly in her heart. I mean, in his heart. Maybe she doesn't, she doesn't even know. But yet he'll come back and point out the beggar, pastor, who's fallen from grace. You see? So all we as sheep have gone astray. Some people going astray is just more visible than others. Right, God's the final judge. But I tell you, those agonizing cries and all that heat, I don't do too well in a lot of heat, never did. I never did when I was a young girl. Not for me. Not for me, the hot place. Mm -hmm. I like snow. I can tell you what. Because see, I'm not, I'm not afraid of the cold weather. <laughs> okay? So, when I say I stand for uh, people, everyone I said that I stood for, I meant it in my heart. When God calls me to uh, refugees, He called me to different um, types of kids with different socioeconomical backgrounds. I've even worked with kids uh, from um, at university, college that had to learn English and they were so well off and sheltered probably and they had say money. Their parents, they give them a, a credit card and send them to the United States. <laughs> and they just have to get through their English courses and and go to college and they are riding on the card right and then I have you, you know what it is to work with kids that come to school hungry that come to school and their parents are not in even good enough shape to take care of them properly and you can see it and you can go to school and you can teach kids and you have some kids in your class who lives in who live in a shelter so I understand, I understand this huge range and there's different types and levels of disparities as well as there's different, say, levels of privilege. And I feel I've been blessed to be, uh, to go uh, back and forth and to be fluid with, say, these different types of populations and varieties and I've learned so much from for, from them I've learned a lot about myself and a lot about just humanity and how um, we all need God uh, right across the board and so um, you'll get me to stand with anyone that actually God wants me to and they need me um, do I stand with the rainbow church no I do not stand with the rainbow church alphabet a city but I, I do stand for Alphabet City in New York City, um, down on the lower east side of Manhattan. I've seen God move in that area, and I would love to see that again. But I do not stand for the Rainbow Church on this channel. However, God's put love in my heart that of a people of the Rainbow Society can be saved and delivered and God can do a mighty thing in them yes because that has happened before it's happening now and it will continue to happen the gospel is for all it's for everyone 
I do not stand with a church that will preach half-truths. I do not stand for um, a church using the term diversity to allow all kinds of degenerate type of lifestyles and music and entertainment in their walls and to put a God stamp on it. I do not stand for people just uh, coming up every day from out of nowhere and just saying that God told them this, God told them not. I'm not going to look at them and say, well, you're wrong. God didn't really tell you. I don't have to do that. All I have to do is know what I should receive and what I should not receive. You know what I mean when I say the Rainbow Church, right? However, I have not um, turned over the rainbow because God, uh, that rainbow that Noah saw is significant. Yes, you know what I mean, right? I think I got that right. If I didn't, then you'll have to just cover me for now because I don't get everything right. If if some of you do out there, more power to you, but I'm not one of them. Okay. And yeah, so um, I've been blessed to be in a churches with a leadership that wants to uphold God's word, righteous standards. But I've also been blessed to have leaders that they will not um, try to shorten the hand of God. God is is mighty to save anyone anyone you see I specialize I mean I specialize I stand for God saving people when I was in uh, Colombia I was there at the time when um, they were discussing dismantling FARC and I, I have listened to the FARC a leaders. I've listened to a few and my heart went out to them. You know, F-A-R-C-K, you know, gorillas. Um, I believe God for the salvation and the deliverance for um, FARC members. And God can do a mighty thing in that circle. And people, there was a woman who was uh, an, an, an a FARC a member who was responsible for a lot of atrocities. Um, you can watch her say videos and um, yeah, I may have to put up, I, I may try to do that in the future to see the brokenness that she was sorry. She, there was a list of people that that she was responsible for their deaths and she sits in a room with these families and they're crying and they're hurried but she's asking for forgiveness and that's hard but I can see in the people that they were trying they were trying and yeah, so I do have a heart, a spiritual burden to see the breakthrough and the dismantling of organized crime members. <laughs> Don't ask me why. Um, and I have, I have, I, I've, I've been in a church where. Former gang members were uh, once in the gangs and they gave their heart to the Lord and they turned in their uh, weapons and their pastors and leaders and deacons. That's what I'm talking about. That's the wonderful work of the gospel. Uh, yes. Um, people involved with uh, witchcraft and soothsaying, uh, you can Google a uh, Nikki Cruz who has who has been a friend in the past with the church where I was attending um, if he was to see me today I'm sure he would probably still recognize me and um, yes just 
really set free from being born into you no know, santaria and witchcraft and all of that and yeah so I'm like this on this channel where sin abound grace even more abound but I want to make some things clear because I want to say where I stand uh, I stand for captives being set free all kinds of captives but sometimes God gives you a burden for certain types and populations right and you just long to keep seeing those breakthroughs right you see when you know about the power of the deliverance of God you're not overtaken with how depraved and, and low a person can go in humanity you know because you know that they can be set free See, there was a man that gave his uh, testimony I don't know if he's even still alive today because when I heard it you know he wasn't like a very young guy but he was uh, he spent he had a career in you know the mafia you know the mafia right like say crime boss uh, the late John Gotti right like that <laughs> I think he even may have known John Gotti. You know, they all kind of know each other. And, um, yeah, he got saved and set free. And, yeah, he was responsible for a lot of death. He says, I sent people to hell. It's not right. I took their lives. But God has saved me. I'm on my way to heaven. That's what I'm talking about. And that's what I stand for on this channel. That's what I want to stand for for the rest of my life. And you know what? That's right. Where sin abound, grace even more will abound. That's the diversity that I'm talking about. That people from all walks of life and backgrounds and socioeconomic status. And people from other religions. That's right. There are so, there are so many Buddhist monks that have come to know Jesus. I celebrate that on this channel. I stand with that. I stand for those who were in Islam and they have they have come to accept Christ they chose to accept Christ I stand with that yes they have seen even a visitation of Jesus yeah I stand with that that's right and I stand with people being able to sing and worship in their cultural languages and affiliations I stand for that that's what diversity means for me that's one of the things and I stand with Israel I stand with Israel and I count myself in with Israel and that's what I stand for okay just want to clarify a little bit a little chat here and then you have to because if you let things go for a few videos <laughs> you know people start to package stuff put it together and they I think they come up with something, some kind of menu. I don't know. They're like, ah, that's not my menu. That's not my diet. <laughs> so anyway, I want to share a little bit of that. Uh, show a little more of my kind of laid back and chill side. I got that. Yeah, I do. I do when I need to. So anyway, thanks again for all of you who are subscribers. Um... The channel is, is growing as as it should. I'm not in a huge hurry uh, to be well known worldwide. No, I'm not. I just want if one person a day is encouraged and blessed, then praise God. That's right. Because small beginnings and baby steps, uh, it's a beautiful thing to see. So. Until next time, I chat and tell you a little more about me and get stuff clarified. Thank you, every one of you, and we will meet again on this channel. Until next time, Shalom.